Hi, today we will see one of the possible ways to merge a set of uh, aligned range maps in MeshLab. So, I load a set of uh, nine range maps which have been already aligned and uh, the goal of the, this of the tutorial is to obtain a unique final 3D model starting from this redundant data. So, this time we will have a look at the surface reconstruction VCG filter. This is uh, an implementation of the classic marching cube approach. So essentially uh, the group of range maps is put is, uh, in a volumetric space, in a volumetric grid, and the uh, uh, final surface is reconstructed uh, by taking into account uh, the, the voxels of I mean the volumetric grid on in which uh, the surfaces defined by the range maps pass. Uh, for this kind of implementation in MeshLab, there are, as you can see, several parameters that you have to take into account, but I think that uh, there are three parameters which are the, the most important ones, and yes, the really most important one is the voxel side. The voxel side essentially defines the size of the voxels of the volumetric grid with which we will, you will uh, reconstruct the final surface. So it's very much related to the average size of the edge of the triangles which will define the final uh, surface. So, for example, we can uh, just launch the filter by s using the, uh, the value uh, proposed by MeshLab. So we will have a reconstruction with a resolution of voxel side of 2.5 millimeters. So if you launch the filter, starting from this set of range maps, you see that in a few seconds you get the result. And the result is uh, uh, visualized as a new layer which is called PlyMC out, and uh, this is the final result. So, this is the result of emerging at 2.5 millimeters. You see, you can see that you, if we measure the sides of uh, one of the most important triang triangles, you see that the the size of uh, the the triangle is very near to the mm, voxel size that we defined uh, for the merging. Okay. But we can also see that uh, the resolution which was chosen for the reconstruction was, pro was probably a bit too big and we lost quite a lot of detail uh, respect to the original range maps from which we started. So it's the, this was the original detail and this is the result. Okay. So the idea is that probably we need to uh, have a to choose a lower value for the voxel side in order to preserve the original detail. So if we launch again merging filter, for example, we can try to set uh, the voxel side at uh, 0 0.6 millimeters. And I take the chance to uh, show the a second important parameter, which is uh, the subvol splitting, this one. The subvol splitting gives you the possibility to split uh, the volumetric grid on which you make the, uh, the reconstruction in several sub-volumes. Uh, uh, so that you are able to handle even quite complex cases, both in terms of number of range maps and uh, in uh, the degree of resolution with which, with which you want you want to uh, reconstruct the final model. So, uh, if uh, you happen to see MeshLab crashing uh, during the merging phase, uh, the first thing that you can do is to try to increase this stuff sub for splitting value. So, I will launch the uh, the merge at 0 0.6 millimeters using subvol splitting too. And uh, the essential difference in the, in the final result is that uh, we won't have a unique final new layer which is the final result, but we will have uh, several layers in this case with subvol splitting is 2 by 2 by 2, so 8 new layers uh, which define the six sub 8 subvolumes on which the volumetric grid has been divided. And so in this way uh, you can have quite nice result, or even with quite complex cases, uh, even several tens of range maps, and uh, with a very low resolution, uh, you could have quite nice results, even using only a laptop. And so you see that it doesn't take a lot of time, simply because we are not uh, using a lot of range maps. Uh, but in the final result, we will have eight new layers. Which uh, in the name of the new layers would be PlyMC out plus uh, code which defined the, 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 the um, position of the subvolume. So you see here 
that uh, the first part defines this part of the subvolume, and then we can make all the other parts visible, and you see that uh, the entire figure is created. If you want to transform the eight different layers in your final model, you just need to apply the flatten visible layer filter, which transforms the eight layers in a unique one. So this is the result of the merging. You see here that uh, uh, using this uh, much lower resolution, we were able to preserve most of the geometric detail of the original range maps, and the result is actually quite good. You see also that uh, there are a few merging artifacts like this one near to the, the nose. This is simply because uh, uh, this volumetric method reconstructs the surface only in the parts which were defined by the range maps. Uh, so in the parts where there, were, there was no geometric data to reconstruct, there is a kind of a growing of the surface which tries to cover the, the missing parts and it creates these uh, uh, geometric artifacts. Uh, this has to be cleaned usually during the editing phase, but there's another way to try to prevent their creation, and this is the third parameter I wanted to show, is the widening parameter. The widening parameter defines uh, how many steps of widening of the surface uh, are, are, uh, are made to try to fill the holes. So if you want to have this kind of uh, artifacts to be less visible, you can try, for example, to relaunch the merging, by setting the widening at uh, 1 or 2. Uh, even though this widening is usually quite uh, useful if you have uh, very small parts of the surface missing, so this fills lots of small holes uh, which are most often, often very present in, uh, in a scanning uh, project. So I would suggest to leave it at least at 1 and uh, then try to decide and even considering the kind of uh, data set you are working with and try to see if uh, it's better to use 1, 2, 3, or even 4 for the widening. So this is for the use of the uh, surface reconstruction VCG. So you start from a set of range maps, you launch the filter, and the three important parameters are voxel side, the most important one, subfold splitting, which gives you the possibility to handle a complex data set, and I also talked a bit about the widening uh, in order to try to uh, prevent the creation of uh, big uh, geometric artifacts. There are at least other three or four ways to uh, obtain uh, a final 3D model starting from range maps. Uh, there will be other tutorials which will show them. Thanks for your attention and uh, uh, once again if you want to comment this kind of tutorials, experiment them, give feedback. Thank you.